it's the first computer that is fundamentally a global singleton. There's only one computer. There's only one Ethereum computer in the world. Like there's only one internet, right? We think of the internet as just something that's there. It's around us. Well, it's the same with Ethereum. It's a global singleton. Like the internet, it's very difficult indeed for Ethereum to be attacked. It can't be stopped. It's very difficult to censor. And in and of itself, it will not fail. This has interesting repercussions for the sorts of applications that you can write for Ethereum. And finally, it's ubiquitous. Wherever you have an internet connection, you have access to the Ethereum computer. There's more. The Ethereum computer is natively multi-user. There's no need to mess around with accounts, user settings, and all that stuff. It comes with that automatically. Anyone who ever uses the Ethereum computer is automatically signed in. Furthermore, they're signed into the very highest standards of crypto security. The Ethereum computer is natively object-oriented. All code that exists in the Ethereum computer exists within a fully encapsulated space. It has its own storage and memory, and no other object, no system administrator, nobody can ever touch that data. It's so hardwired, I'm calling it virtual silicon. It's like these are the rules that are actually inbuilt into the the computer into the Ethereum computer. It's accessible. It has a JavaScript API, which I'll go into. And finally, it's verifiable and auditable. You can check to see all of the computation that's ever happened, and you can be absolutely certain that the results it comes to are the correct results. In this sense, Ethereum is similar to the internet, only the internet is dealing with communication. Ethereum, the Ethereum computer, is dealing with processing, computation. There it is. There's the Ethereum computer, the world computer. Global singleton. All interaction that's done with the Ethereum computer is done through external accounts. There they are on the edge, the red ones. External accounts can do operations with the computer. Or, in more object-oriented terms, they can send messages. They can pass messages into the computer. Once you're in the computer, you can't get out. There is no other way for the computer to interact with the rest of the world. However, the objects in the computer are free to send message messages between each other. It's a fully object-oriented message-passing environment that exists everywhere in the world, wherever there's internet. 